of course, the biggest story in college basketball, I mean, it, it, we, we were talking about this last week. There really hasn't been a player that's drawn this type of attention in many, many years. It's Zion Williamson, and we saw the effect of an impact of Zion. It, you know, it was a very close game. It's a one-point game there between Duke and, and North Carolina, but you wonder if Duke makes that run in the tournament without Zion. Probably not. Probably not is correct. I mean, without him coming down the stretch, uh, Duke was, what, 3-3? Three and three? Mm. Uh, And totally different. I mean, th- this is a team that still struggles to make threes on a consistent basis, and you take that force out of their lineup, I mean, it puts even more pressure on guys like R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish to make shots. And, you know, you start looking at the crazy stats, and, again, that's why I say don't overanalyze all this stuff. Just watch and let your eyes and your gut take over. But, I mean, Duke, for the most part, without uh, a game maybe against Virginia and Charlottesville, hasn't been able to really take care of business and beat people by making threes. But Zion is a super freak. And when you see him in person, you have an even a better appreciation for an incredible athlete and what an amazing talent he really is. So I'm kind of one of those guys that doesn't pay attention to college hoops that much until March. And I've seen John Morant play like a half a game. All right. I know his name. Seen the highlights. I know he's going to be. Yeah, I've seen highlights. I know he's going to be one of the top picks in the draft. He's going to play Marquette's Marcus Howard. And now apparently yeah. got to pay attention to him. Tell me about both those players and teams. Explosive. And it may be as fun a first round <laughs> matchup as we're going to see. Uh, just in the fact that. It is a team game, but these two individuals are two dudes that can say, hey, get on my back and let's go. And I, I cannot wait to see how that plays out. And, again, hopefully everybody's 100% ready to roll. Uh, but I think when those brackets came out yesterday and you saw that matchup, the first thing you thought of was scoring, right? Give me the ball. Get out of the way. Sports Center highlights. Here they come. So uh, Marquette really struggled down the stretch, and maybe this they can take a kind of a reboot and a breather. But in terms of individual talent, uh, that game may be one you just absolutely circle and say, hey, uh, I may be busy in, in the first day or two of the tournament, but I'm going to watch this game just because of those two guys. Talking to Mark Packer, host of Off Campus on uh, ESPNU Radio and Sirius XM, uh, breaking down these brackets here. Uh, what do you make of, of what happened to Tennessee yesterday? Man, that was a shocker to me. They look so good against Kentucky in that, in that yep. comeback. Uh, maybe they blew their wad. Maybe they were a little gassed yesterday. But, man, they were bad. Every time they had the ball, it looked like they they're just they were out of sync. They turned the ball over. couldn't make a shot. Um, but they are too put it to a few weeks. Well, I love their team. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> old. They're tough. They're mentally tough. Uh, kind of a typical Rick Barnes club when they're really good. Uh, and I'm with you. I, you know, I watched the Kentucky-Tennessee game, which was just a great – High energy, high octane, terrific element in terms of both teams playing at a ridiculously high level. Uh, the emotion of the game, they've had unbelievable matchups in the regular season. And you almost got the sense, even the celebration afterwards, it was such a great comeback in the last two minutes to win it, uh, that that was like, hey, we've reached the finish line. And, and I'm with you. Yesterday, I'm, I turned that game on, and Auburn's making everything they look at. And keep in mind, that's the way they play. They're mm-hmm. up and down the court. They fire a bunch of threes. And, man, they were making everything they looked at. And Tennessee didn't have anything left. I mean, they, they got waxed yesterday by 20, which is so out of character for the way they've played all year. So I, I sense that will probably help them in some respects kind of say, hey, listen, take a step back. Let's kind of do a little analyzing here. And that's not really who we are. Uh, and they took a, on a team that got hot. And to me, that game is kind of exactly what you expect the next three weeks, that you may be the better team in every sense of the word on paper. And when you analyze it, you say, hey, listen, I've done the eye test, I've done the homework. But then you watch the results and you realize how dumb you are. You know, a team can get hot. And that three-point line, if you're making shots and you start getting the momentum, we have seen this so many times before, not only this season, but really even in the tournament, uh, that's why it's just not a given lock that Duke's going to win the national championship because they don't make threes right, on a right. consistent basis. So, uh, to me, that was a crazy game yesterday. And, again, good good for Bruce Pearl. I mean, the guy that gets fired from uh, Tennessee, puts him on probation with all the NCAA stuff, and comes back and wins the, Nash- and won- comes back and wins the SEC title. So, uh, a great story for Auburn. But, yeah, I-, I was really, really surprised, too. I wonder what Bruce Pearl's blood pressure is like during the game. <laughs> when, they do, when they do the Pearl cam, and he, I mean, he just doesn't sit down. Yeah. He's screaming on every play. I mean, he's just nuts. Well. You know, given the fact that your location and one of the all-time great coaches oh, in yeah. sweaters in terms of intensity was Gary Williams at Maryland. and I mean, you would just watch the game. When Gary was coaching, you would just watch Gary, forget what was going on, and 
But Bruce has got the same thing. He's got the sweat factor and just going bonkers on every possession. But uh, these coaches are a blast to watch. I mean, this is this is a high wire act coming up uh, between now and getting to Minneapolis. All right, so let's talk about Virginia here. Um, yeah, you know, Virginia obviously is is not as good as Duke. They they proved that on the court. Now, I'm not saying they can't beat them if, you know, if they play them again, but um, Duke it, to me, head and shoulders better than than Virginia. I don't know about Tennessee versus Virginia. If and I know we're projecting. Uh, but Virginia did not look good against Florida State, and Duke handled Florida State. So I just think that there's a gap there. Um, but kind well, of kind of projecting forward, Virginia in the South. Um, you know, what's your what's your outlook on them? I, I've got them getting all the way to playing Tennessee, and and you know, speaking of guys that don't sweat and don't scream and have it totally under control, on the other end of the spectrum, here's Tony Bennett, right? I mean, just the guys of class personified. I love their team, too, uh, and I, I do think that they're going to make the run all the way to the, the, the lead eight. Of course, it's the best news for Virginia fans is for me to tell you you're not going to get to the Final Four. But to me, Tony Bennett and Mark Hugh at Gonzaga are very similar, especially what we heard about the Zags. Now we're backwards of Virginia here. But for years and years and years, we always heard of this about Gonzaga. Man, that Mark Hugh, what a class guy, great coach. But yeah, he never get in the tournament. He never seemed to get it. Well, he finally cracked through and got to the Final Four and Almost won a national championship, losing out to North Carolina. To me, Tony Bennett's kind of the same thing. Every box is checked. The guy's been a brilliant coach. They've got a great program. He handles himself a class. So his kids are the same way. The only thing missing is he can't get to the Final Four. Well, guess the guy is an awesome coach. And I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of rooting for him to get there. Uh, just for the fact that I like him so much. I love what he's doing with this program. But I, I think Virginia's going to be just fine. Defense travels. Uh, they're better offensively this year than they were a year ago. Uh, I think there's a team that certainly can get to Minneapolis, and I'd love to see them get there. But, you know, at some point in time, I do think that, you know, when you start to muck it up with them, you know, can they get into a funk and have to win every game 72-55? You know, every, every thing, mm-hmm. you know, I know an eight-point lead feels like a 15-point lead, but I do think at some point in time you've got to be able to score. I think he's got his best chance this year. DeAndre Hunter's a great player. Their backcourt's out of sight. They've got experience. They've got size. And I also think they've got that chip on their shoulder because they're going to be sick and tired like the rest of America watching that UMBC highlight again and again and again coming up here for the next couple of weeks. 